children have um, unrealistic expectations <laughs> for parents. You know? This is why I say it's a job you're bound to fail at. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how many hundreds of percent you give to it. You know, it's a very hard job, you know, very hard role to play. Because there is a um, uh, an innate projection of an archetype, you know, that my mother and father are the god and goddess, you know, they're, you know, they're of the archetypal realms in some kind of a way. And um, children, therefore, are inevitably disappointed, or pretend they're not disappointed, or just aren't aware or too conscious and make up a story, it seems to me. Um, so as a result of that, parents aren't really good enough and the children aren't really satisfied. And childhood's not a fun time, you know, by any means. The trick in um, inner work therapy and getting through all of this is, is to dislocate the need, the desire, the disappointment, the unfulfilled um, from the person themselves, not spend the rest of your life trying to get uh, bread from the butchers you know? because it's not available you see and my father never said I love you you're great you know you're a great son to have I really you know, and I sort of was waiting and waiting and waiting for that to happen until he died you know like many people do and you think maybe you know he'll just rescind at that point and go I thought you were great all along. I couldn't say it, you know, and it'll all be fine, you know. But I mean, if I had a dollar, etc., many people I've worked with who said exactly the same thing. But you know, in retrospect, he said his own version of that. He said to me, "Look after all those lovely children." It wasn't too bad, you know. Looking back, at the time, I thought it was just another punch in the face, really. But it was the best he could do. It was okay. Mm. But. He wasn't really a dad, you know, he was a workaholic, he was an alcoholic, he was PTSD from Second World War, he was what he was, he was a casualty, you know, in so many ways. And he had a lot of good points as well. To sift through all of that and say, I take on the good stuff which I can feel in me and I reject the stuff which was abhorrent, you know, remains abhorrent, is very difficult. And then to say, um, this doesn't mean I can't have that. You see, so you know, I say to people when I'm working them, well, you know, find an older man, an older woman, find a, a mentor type mm -hmm. figure. I mean, be open to somebody who appreciates you, who gives you the fatherly things. There's many mothers who are not really mothers, you know, fathers who not, don't really have fatherly bone in their body and, and all of this. They can't do it for one reason or another, and yet people stay with the desire and the need and the attachment to what it is they want from that person mm. because at certain developmental stages is what I call the Einzig. The Einzig is the only one, you see. You're attached to your mother like she's the only one and so your relationships will, with women if you're a man, you know, will reflect that idea of a kind of conditioned loyalty really, mm. you see. You're still attached to her who was the only one, the only one who can give, and the only one who you want the approval from. And that can be quite literal when you haven't shared childhood limitations. So it's a big step in inner work to say, you know, I want this, I can't get it there, doesn't mean I can't have it.